Top Gun is a movie about getting an in-camera. It's such a special project, and Tom really drove home the fact that this movie cannot be made until we have the technology and we have a special story to tell. We are cleared into the area. Verify cameras are on. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. My job is to try to turn storyboards into reality on a day-to-day -day basis. That's ground photography, mounted camera platforms, whether they're internal or external on the F-18s, we used both. It's helicopter and it's jet to jet. All of those things mixed together make the perfect aerial photography, especially for a movie like Top Gun Maverick. This is not just a green screen nonsense. We're not on some stage. We're out there in the real world capturing all this footage. We were at the limits, absolute bitter edge limits of being able to keep these jets in frame. Top Gun was kind of more about long lens, so we used the 75 to 400 all over the place. For Top Gun, a majority of all the exterior lenses were Fujinon lenses. All the ground to air, the air to air. We needed all those lengths to shoot the F-18s and the versatility they gave us. By having a long lens, we could build all kinds of great foreground elements coming through the frame. You know, sometimes the producers ask you why you have all these lenses on here or you have this package, why you need all these zooms or whatever it is, but they all have kind of a different purpose, you know, and then when they see all the, you know, the 75 to 400 work and you're capturing the plane at the end of the runway with a doubler on it and it looks clean and it looks kind of magical, they all kind of appreciate in the end. The Fujis work really good with Master Primes and they cut well with, I mean, on this movie we had everything. <laughs> <laughs> Verify cameras are on. Check cameras on. There you go. Some of the biggest challenges in the movie are getting our camera lens and camera package to fly at 400 miles an hour and pull three Gs. Kevin LaRosa set out and figured out what aircraft he thought would be the best to use, how to get a camera mounted on it, and how to build a team to make that happen, and he did. He delivered the Cinejet. Three, two, one, turn up. Here comes some jeans. Shot over camera systems had just come out with a shot over F1 gimbal, and it was the latest and greatest six axis gimbal. And I knew I needed to put that gimbal on a jet. What I came up with that night, I designed it in Microsoft Paint, just pretty rudimentary, put a shot over on the front of this L39, and I said, that's it, I'm gonna build that. About a year, year and a half later, we were in full testing with what we know now today is the L39 Cinejet with a shot over F1 rush on the front of it. And that platform absolutely helped us obtain groundbreaking aerials on this movie. It's an L39, it's a little Czechoslovakian fighter trainer jet. For me, the airplane's a dream to fly because it's very light on the controls, it's very maneuverable. I have amazing visibility all over. The equipment that we used on Top Gun Maverick as far as aerial gimbals is the shot over camera gimbal. We use the shot over K1 on the helicopter and we use the smaller gimbal, the shot over F1 on the jets. A great camera position. The technology now has changed so much. I was the aerial cinematographer on the first Top Gun. So in 1985 when we were shooting in the movie, it was periscope systems, very limited to a periscope that would be a 50 millimeter lens and that's it, in a Learjet. Great system at the time, but now with the modifications that they came up with for the F1 to allow it to handle these jet speeds, I mean, it's capable of doing 350 knots and pulling three Gs now with this new F1J. It's amazing how that thing flies. And we needed something like that, to be able to capture all this stuff and chase the jets. It was the only thing I thought that can almost keep up. <laughs> Claudio's requirement on the movie that we had to use the Sony Venice, but the full-size Venice. It had to have the recording system on the back. And that lessened the amount of room that we had in here for any particular lens. We had to have that 4K coverage. So the best lenses to put in here ended up being the Fuji 20 to 120 and the 85 to 300. That gave us the ability to shoot wide angle or with the other one on the tail with the 300 on there, we could push all the way into the 300. 
getting into the wake turbulence of an F-18 in a small jet is something you can't imagine. There was times where we would get rocked so hard that my hands, I had my elbows really dug into the side of the cockpit and my hands on the controls and uncontrollably my hands slammed into the canopy above me. I could not keep my arms down. But through it, when he watched the image, the, the camera and the lenses, there was, they weren't rattled by it at all. Aside from the L-39 Cinejet on the movie, I also flew a Phenom 300 camera jet. We can fly a shot over F-1 Rush on the nose and the tail. We're flying two Fujinon lenses at the exact same time, two aerial DPs on board, and we were coming away with two different shots. The Phenom allowed us to travel farther. We could load up the two systems, more fuel, travel to a location, film with an F-18 for an hour. He runs out of fuel and goes back. A second one is there loitering, waiting for us. We continue shooting for another hour with him. Then we all traveled back. So we were getting three hours of work done with one camera system, and it, it worked fantastic. The Sony Venice camera and these Fujinon zooms were mounted on the nose of a jet. We would literally say to each other, man, we're putting a lens where a lens has never been and probably will never go again. I mean, we were flying these Fuji lenses up these vertical sheer cliffs in the Cascade Mountain Range in Washington. We were pushing to the limits that we were allowed. Simultaneously, I was whipping the cameras around, operating them to the, the extremes the gimbal would allow me to do. Claudio was a little concerned, would I be able to acquire the aircraft having my widest lens only be an 85 because when I'm in the Cinejet with a lens that long, it's sort of like looking through a paper towel tube and trying to find something out in a blue sky. Come on! Having any fun yet? There's many times we get to an end of a shot and I would come up from the shot and look outside and the whole world was upside down. And I had no idea we were even in that position because I was so locked into the, to the screen. Everybody has asked me that the jet going inverted and pulling over the tops of those mountain peaks, was that real? And it was. That, that was a real granite mountain that those jets are that close to pulling those types of Gs inverted over to dive back down the other side. Not much more to say about how much more impressive could that be. It became an amazing lens to use for building a lot of energy and action. Mike Fitzmaurice has an amazing skill at tracking high-speed targets. He was kind of our secret weapon. Even on the longer end of the lens, when I'm in the camera jet pulling G's and he's in the back, still being able to operate and acquire those jets. So he did a phenomenal job. It's a team. Many times that it's not just a team, it's like you have a dance partner. Kevin LaRosa is my dance partner in aerial cinematography. And we constantly were putting ourselves right on that edge. The challenge was is to not push too far because we don't want to hurt the gimbal. At the same time, we want to push into those speeds and g-forces to get exciting shots and we're literally taking that Fuji lens and sticking it right next to those big afterburner cans and I'm saying three, two, one, burner. And these huge burners light up on this F-18 and that thing powers away. Three, two, one, burner. A place where that lens I think has never been before. Got an amazing shot. Four F-18s suddenly appearing over a lake coming around a point. Kevin LaRosa was using some trees to give us nice foreground wipes. And as they're coming through the frame, there's this immense amount of vapor being pulled off the jets, and it almost looks like a sonic boom sort of cone. And a 300 millimeter lens being operated on a remote head like this is difficult. But again, I decided to push myself and put a two-time extender on it so that I had a 50 to 600. And now I could get all the way out on the long end of that 600 millimeter and try and pan with these aircraft at max pan speed of these gimbals. And when you are operating at the bitter edge of your capability, the energy gets really exciting. Oh! Ah! 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 
what I do love about the, the Fuji Zooms, like all of them from the Promista to the Premieres, you know, some Zooms have a very kind of ticky area where they kind of zoom and it's like, you know, you're, you're never really quite sure. But what the great thing about Fuji is they have a great kind of ring and feel for focus pullers to get your actors in sharp, which is slightly critical. Here we go. We just like how the Fuji lens kind of maintains its field of view throughout the zoom range. If you get a flare in the zoom, it doesn't fog the lens in any other way. The coatings are great. There are shots where the sun's dead center in the frame. Whether I put them into heavy flare, big humidity changes, heavy G-forces, conditions that I would imagine the engineers of these lenses never thought that they would be in. We put them there, and the lenses work flawlessly. All the hundreds of hours I flew on that movie, I don't ever remember being grounded for a lens issue or a camera issue. It was 100% dispatch reliability, and that's huge for me as a camera pilot, knowing that the equipment sitting in that gimbal is going to do its job. If we have a lens malfunction, everything stops. We're going to land, and you know we might not be in a position to land. We might have subject aircraft, as in F-18s up there. So the whole show has to stop, and we got to get on the ground and fix it. We don't have that problem with Fujinon lenses, and that's why we own them. Regarding the lenses, uh, reliability or serviceability, things like that, uh, I'd have to say reliability is fantastic. Serviceability, I don't know anything about because there's never been a problem. So I don't ever have to send one in. You could have the 1885 up there and have a great range that's on set that's similar to most primes out there. And I feel like, sometimes I feel like that's all I need. Pretty proud of the fact we built that relationship with the U.S. Navy, we built that trust level, and that allowed us to get that gimbal and our camera packages right where they needed to be. The movie is the pinnacle of any aviation movie ever to date, and I actually don't know how it could ever be topped.